Hi ladies, my name is Sharda and today I'm going to be talking about the importance of deliverance. This is a very important video for those of you who want to grow rapidly in Christ. For those of you who have been stuck in your walk with Christ, this is the video for you. So keep watching and we'll get into the meat of the situation. Okay? Now... The importance of deliverance. The first thing we're going to be looking at or discussing is demons. Now, I know this topic isn't everyone's cup of tea. And not all Christians believe that you can have a demon. And not all Christians believe in demons that they even exist. Okay? Now, for those of you who are looking to improve your walk with Christ rapidly, you cannot gloss over this very important reality that there are demons. And from my personal experience walking with Christ, solid in ministry for five years, constantly dealing with behaviors within myself that are not Christ-like, I can tell you that demons are a reality and they affect every Christian in many areas of their personalities or what they think is their personality, which is just learned behavior that becomes a habit. The, 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 very, the very root of that habit is demonic. And I like to think of it this way. If it is the behavior that is not Christ-like, it is a behavior that is of the devil. It's demonic. And a stronghold is a demon that you have not addressed yet. Now, how do I know this is real? How do I know this is true? Because, sisters, I've been walking this walk. And I've been praying just like you. And I've been reading the Bible very, very meticulously, just like you. And I have been listening to the Lord, just like some of you. <laughs> I have been minding my behaviors, just like a small percentage of you. And therefore, I have been experiencing ongoing deliverance for a very long time. I have not met anyone that has been totally free from demons but what I do believe is that our Lord Jesus Christ was free of them because he was perfect and because he did not sin and he was close to the Father so he knew what what was in man and what was in man was sin and demonic torment which was not a part of him light has no part with darkness he said so I believe straight off the bat that everyone has demons. Now you're going to say, okay, well, you're born of the Spirit. How can you have demons? Being born of the Spirit is just what it says. You are born of the Spirit of God. The Spirit resides in you. However, you have a three part to your being. You have a body, soul, and spirit. And soulish behaviors and fleshly or what we call carnal behaviors are deep-seated demonic effects that you have in your life. Habits that have a root, which is a demon, that is controlling your behavior in different aspects of life. What I like to think of is if it's not Christ-like, it's a demonic root you have there. It's a stronghold you have there. And it's something you have to deal with in order for you to renew your mind. The Bible says, renew your mind and, and, and this is a good way to walk with the Lord. And I'm telling you the meat of the situation. You have to get rid of those demonic behaviors in order to have the freedom to renew your mind and grow rapidly in Christ. Now, I know that was a tough pill to swallow, but that's a basic explanation of, of the, the things concerning demonic control in areas and aspects of 
you and your habits and your life. Now, I'm not going to go further into it because that's just what I plan to explain here. This is about deliverance. And for me to talk about deliverance, I had to touch on the demons part because that's what you're getting delivered from. Okay? Now, everything has a counterfeit. So, yes, I do understand it's very confusing for uh, some believers, especially new believers in Christ, what kind of deliverance is of God and what isn't because. You know, the enemy tries to deceive people in many different ways. And you have a lot of Eastern mysticism floating around that is um, being viewed as legitimate deliverance. And that is something that you'll have to work on with your discernment. And you'll have to work with the Lord to discern the real deliverance from the fake stuff. Okay? So... The Bible says, deliverance is the children's bread. Yes, that is how important it is in your walk with Christ. And I'm going to read what I have here. I wrote my points down in my journal. What I have here, the meaning of bread. The bread in that verse means food sustenance. And what does food sustenance do? It nourishes, it renews your cells, it produces growth and long longevity, longevity, <laughs> however you say it, that's how I say it. It keeps you alive, it retains youthfulness and vitality. Now, all of this deliverance does. It is your bread for a born-again Christian that is looking to rapidly increase uh, the vitality of their walk with God. This is what deliverance does for your body and your spiritual life. It nourishes your spiritual life. It renews your mind. You, t- you, you, you um, read in the Bible... The renewal of your mind, you know, you need to come to that place. Deliverance allows us to do that. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. It produces growth and longevity. You grow closer to the Lord. You hear Him better when you have cut down demonic strongholds in your life that were habitual things that you did that were not Christ-like. When you get deliverance, you break those kingdoms down in your flesh. You break through that carnal behavior and the the barriers that are separating you from a good relationship with the Lord. There is not a lot of communion between light and darkness. The Bible says, if you have darkness in you, how great is that darkness? So as long as we have flesh... We have a little bit of darkness, uh, well, we have darkness generally in our flesh. But how great is that darkness? Someone walking with the Lord and seeking to walk in the light with Him, a closer relationship with Him, will systematically get a closer closer relationship if they cut down that darkness within them through the power of deliverance. The act of deliverance. Because it is for the born again Christian. And those that believe in Christ. Okay. It keeps you alive. Deliverance saves you from being constantly deceived over and over again. When you break through that stronghold that you have. That you're dealing with. You get spiritual freedom that keeps you alive. The enemy wants to kill you. He wants to kill you and stop your walk with Christ and stunt your growth. And when you get deliverance, you live a little bit longer to perfect, to go through that sanctification process that the Lord wills for you to go through. It retains youthfulness and vitality. Again, deliverance increases your faith. Think about youthfulness and vitality in your spiritual life. 
it keeps your spiritual fire going. You have a fire in there. You do not want it to be quenched. You do not want to be lukewarm or cold. You always want to be kindled, hot. You want to have oil in your lamp. You cannot maintain that without deliverance. Deliverance renews that inside of you. Every time you break down a stronghold in your life, through the means of deliverance, you can walk with the Lord better and you have a renewed faithfulness in Him. Renewed faith in Him. Deliverance specifically keeps you well and ready to be used and sanctified by God. It makes you a better vessel for the Lord to use and to direct and to sanctify for His purposes. How great is that darkness in you? Deliverance helps you to reduce that darkness closer and closer to Christ likeness and godliness. And then righteousness becomes something that is that is a second nature to you. It's it's a natural thing for you. Okay? It prepares you deliverance, prepares you for a higher level of spiritual revelation and learning. It prepares you for the kingdom to come, which is God's kingdom. You don't want to wait to get perfected at the end of, of time when he's ready to judge you for all the things you've done. You want to spend your life being perfected and ready for him to use so that when he judges you, he finds faith in you. He finds righteousness in you. And that kingdom of darkness is not alive in you when he comes back. You want to get well acquainted with godliness for when the Lord returns. Okay, let's get a little deeper into this. Deliverance helps you to be sober-minded and conscious of your sin life. When you constantly receive deliverance, you start to see yourself for what you really are. You start to drop the preconceived notions you had about yourself. That you are fantastic in the kingdom. That you don't need anything else. What you are dropping is the belief that you don't need God. That's right. Deliverance helps you to drop unbelief. Because you need to rely on God for your salvation and your growth in righteousness rather than focus on your own ability to overcome sin. You start to realize that there are demons dwelling in your flesh that are affecting your growth with Christ and the only person that can save you from it is Jesus Christ. And you, therefore, your walk cannot be works-based but it is Him that works in you to create the godly behavior and the righteousness. And you rely on Him for that. I hope you understand what I'm saying to you because this is from personal experience that I have written these things for you. To help you. Okay? Because I care about you. And this is the reality of the situation. Most of us are acquainted with the reality that is just glitz and glamour. I have already arrived. I'm a child of the Lord. And then the growth is stunted. No. If you want to be the Christian that God wants you to be, you will go deeper into this and address your own sin life to grow. And that's what I have been doing. I have seen my selfishness for what it is. I have seen my pride for what it is. I have seen that God is not my my waiter. I am the servant. God doesn't serve me. I am the one that serves God. And from seeing that, I learned to rely on God's strength to help me to be a better servant, to clean me out. I have learned from deliverance to resist sin. And that's what makes it easy to resist sin. The Bible says, he that committed sin is not of God. But you can't say that you, ha you don't sin. So therefore, when you have sin in your life, it's not 
what we're what we're not doing is we're not allowing willful sin but we have sin that we sometimes stumble we call it we stumble we fall we get back up god forgives and that's that now deliverance helps you to be conscious of what's going on inside of you so that you can clean your you can come to a state of repentance for what you see in yourself okay deliverance increases your faith in your father's faithfulness in your life right now you have a renewed faith of God's faithfulness to always deliver and provide for you when you see him doing a work in you and um, the last point that I'm going to read here that I have here deliverance is a birthright okay it's a gift from the Lord to be delivered when you come to a state of repentance and minding your own sin and to deliver others of strongholds it's a gift it's a birthright but it's a gift but a birthright could be parted with or lost through spiritual or physical willful misconduct so when you choose to sin willfully you come out of the realm of that place of your birthright and therefore deliverance becomes something that's hard to come by you 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 hit a wall if you don't come to repentance you will not be delivered and if you don't come to repentance you can deliver other people but you'll have a very hard time doing that because you know we all read about the seven sons of Sceva how the devil turned back and ripped them and you know made a mockery of them and that's what happens when you're not in a good place with that birthright so we want to avoid willful misconduct and if we do willfully sin we have an advocate with the father we need to come to a place of repentance and continue our walk with the lord and and seek deliverance from the brethren or your sisters in christ they can pray deliverance too it was a right of the firstborn that birthright of deliverance was a right of the firstborn which is jesus christ the firstborn of the father um he gave us the authority also to deliver his people so he made us disciples to do the same as he has done to walk the way he has walked he gave us that authority to do so it is an act of faith knowing that jesus will do it for those who desire to renew their minds and follow him in truth so why doesn't deliverance work for everyone everyone's not at the same place of truth about their sin sometimes i have struggled with that problem where i have not acknowledged my sin as the truth i'm thinking in my mind oh well people say this about me or i'm doing that but i don't really think it's a sin but let's try deliverance and see if it helps and that's not a good place to be you have to acknowledge your sin believe that it's true about you that habit or that misconduct and submit yourself for deliverance repent to the lord from the heart he searches the hearts of men so if you're praying for someone that's not getting deliverance sometimes they're not at that place of truth of acknowledging their sin for what it is or God is searching their heart and maybe they're not ready to make this commitment yet. And so we don't discourage them. We just keep praying for them, pray for them and explain to them how to come to that place of repentance and show them how to pray to the Lord to come to that place of repentance because many times I was in that situation. Now I hope this helps everybody all my sisters in Christ. It's a very important video and I hope that you take it very seriously. Okay? Be blessed and have a good day. I love you guys. Bye.